Okay, the next speaker needs no introduction, it's me. <laughs> a man who needs no introduction. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to chat with you for a little bit about uh, celebrating my new uh, publication, The Bully Go Round, which is a flip book. I have a trilogy of uh, flip books in uh, poetry, picture book, and uh, novel. And uh, last year we decided to take some ideas about looking at the bully issue, an arts approach and literacy approach to bullying. So we're going to celebrate a couple of activities. I'm going to give you a taste of them. Uh, some of you might have experienced them with me in a, um, other sessions, but we're going to zip through them. And I, I, my other books, and I'm only doing this not to uh, plug them, okay, no, but I wrote a book called Good Books Matter, Drama, Schemes, Themes, and Dreams with my colleague Debbie Nyman and with Kathy Lundy, Creating Caring Classrooms. And that's sort of a synthesis of who I am. I'm, I'm a literature-based person when I work with my student teachers and in the classroom. I start with books, start with stories, start with poem. Uh, and I want some active learning experiences, so there's where the drama and role playing comes in. I might give you a taste of that today as well in my short time. And Kathy and I put together, we, when we started this book, uh, Creating Caring Classrooms, we wanted it to be about bullying. And uh, I went to a bullying conference on Monday, an anti-bullying, it was called Be Building Better Relationships. And there's actually 80,000 publications or programs about dealing with the bully issue. And Kathy and I looked at that particular dilemma and we came up with a framework of um, building community, building communication, uh, compassionate understanding, collaboration. We argue when those things were in place, then we can help kids confront the bully issue. I think one of the first statements that uh, we put together in the Bully Go Round, that no lesson can change the kids' behaviors. All we want to invite students to do in our classrooms is confront the issue and empower them to take some action and build some compassionate understanding, build those better relationships, and I think it happens through interaction. Um, and one of the panelists on this uh, conference on Monday was a teenage girl. At the end of the day, they had a panel of teenagers, and they said, what advice would you give to um, help teachers understand bullying? She said, stop calling it bullying. It's about relationships. And so that made a lot of sense to me, too. I want to give you a taste of a couple of activities uh, that build that sense of interaction and uh, work towards an understanding, always working towards an understanding, in this case through literacy and the arts. So you've got that file card. Again, this one I might have shared with a couple of people. It's my best activity. <laughs> and actually, I, I, Kathy Lundy and I, I called Kathy. I said, Kathy, I got this great idea. I had this idea in the shower. And she says, Larry, I don't understand it. <laughs> and uh, we and our uh, editor worked hard to put this activity in. And we celebrated when the book came out. Our very first audience was uh, 50 superintendents and, uh, and principals. And they did the activity, so it worked. So on the, your file card, there's a blank side to your file card. I'd like you to draw a circle, a square, and a triangle. They can attach, they can be any size, they can not attach. A circle, square, and a triangle is the title of the activity. Any size, any connection, or not connected. This is the art part. So this is how, um, I have it represented, if you can see it, that's great. And I, had the, I actually had the luxury of having three colors, and you just might have had your pencil, pen, or marker. But if this was my image, I could have made the triangle a little bit larger. My question is, which one is the bully, which one is the bullied, and which one is the bystander? There's no wrong answer. And so, I, as I say, I've red, uh, blue, and black, and the color could influence your interpretation. But I'd just like you to spend a moment discussing, with, oh, we'll just do an audience. Who thinks this is the bully, the triangle? I hope you can see it over there. Ron, because you're up front and you're a friend, why is that the bully? The bully. Because the, that person is physically touching okay. and or, or interacting with we can you And I could have had a bit more, but that's the way I did it. It could have been, we can say, smothering or overpowering this. And right. anybody else have a different reason? So it's... It was like invading the space. So invading the space. Just to call 
And, and that, many of the students say that too. So if that was the black one, is that going to be the bully? And uh, Joan? Okay, so the, the sharp angles. And so for a variety of reasons. But this could be the bully. The black square could be this bully. How could the black square be the bully? Who's got an idea for that one? Joan? So he's excluded and he could be saying to this person, this could be the bystander saying to the bullied person, don't you say anything. He might be saying, I'll protect you. And the bullies are removed from it. Any other reasons for the uh, black square? Why he or, he or she might be the bully? Excluded. Well, black again is always the bad. Right, and so where we, we red was the, her connotation, maybe black, and it is a smaller one in the spacing issue. Uh, again, if we have a metaphor for a playground, perhaps. And of course, this could be the bully. How could the blue circle be a bully? Anybody? So it's surrounding. So it's surrounding, and so that whole the circle image, Judy. Exactly. So there is no right, wrong or right answer. It just promotes that discussion of the different roles, the players in the bully, um, the complexity of bullying. So share your image with a friend and give a reason for yours. Which one is the bully, bullied, and bystander? Now that you know that they represent something. 60 seconds, go. Thank you. So that was just um, a mind on activity to think about it. I actually prefer this activity when you use scissors and cut them out because they can manipulate the shapes. And that's how we did it with the administrators and superintendents. We cut out the shapes. And, and so with the file cards, you can use that to cut out the shapes. And of course, size matters. Then the next activity, and we have always thinking of other ways to take this activity, is actually a black line master in the uh, creating caring classrooms. It does appear in the bully go round with a little bit variation as well, uh, because these have equal, what do you call that? Equal surface, surface equal perimeter, area, equal area. So we wanted them to be the same size. But one extension is now with your partner, I'd like you to tell a story with your shapes and combine them. How about a group of four combining shapes? And as I say, when they're cut out, you can manipulate them. The art teacher in me wants to look at circle squares and triangles, the different sizes, the different shapes and the spacing, because that's part of the design element. But it moves into telling a story about bullying uh, using these particular shapes. Well, let's add another shape. You're allowed another geometric shape. What shape are you going to add in there? Or you're allowed to add lines. And then you can carry it forth. And of course, you can tell the story uh, that connects to those particular uh, shapes. So it's a metaphorical one. I've had great success with kids uh, to get them thinking about it and talking about it and showing them that there's no wrong answer. The next activity I think I've shared with thousands of people, and I just want to give you a taste of it as well. Uh, on the line side of your fi file card, or you can just take any of the white scrap that the hotel gave you. Uh, again, I'm working it very quickly, but I've done this in various capacities, and we put it in, the, in our book. Uh, I'll talk about variations for it. Imagine that you are invited to be dictionary editors. The dictionary is just about that. Miriam Webster is just about to be published, except they don't have a definition for the word bully. You decide whether it's verb or noun, and could you do the definition for the word bully? 70 seconds is all I'm giving you. And I'm going to invite you to stay quiet for this next little bit, but I'd like you to exchange a card with somebody and read their card silently. Just somebody at your table. Exchange the card. And read what they have written for their definition. And everybody read it out loud at once. Three, two, one, go. I didn't mean at once. I meant at the same time. Here we go. So look at uh, what your friend's card said. And 
I mean, this is casual, but it's also uh, deliberate. I use file cards a lot. And Kathy and I wrote a framework, why use file cards? I got tricks in my classroom. Find somebody who has the same colored card as you. Find somebody who has a different colored card as you. Get into groups of four. And again, it could be homogeneous or heterogeneous by color. Find somebody who has the same color card as you is not at your table. Always finding ways to interact. And I know it seems very casual and obvious, but I didn't make that one of our lessons. I just said, turn to somebody and exchange the card here. So read that card uh, silently now. And here's the question. What word or phrase from your friend's card would you uh, borrow for your definition? What word or phrase? You say, oh, I really like that. If you were taking a highlighter marker or underlining it or circling it. And I'm just going to survey the room again. I would be recording these on a chart or smart board or a PowerPoint. Let's get our word or phrase. Let's call them out. Somebody give me one word or phrase from their friend's card. Victimize. Victimize. Power. Power. Beat. Beat. Range of behavior, and I thought you said change, which could be included as well. With intention. Intimidation. Physically or emotionally. Okay. Promotes fear. Promotes fear. Okay, obviously I didn't write these down, but this becomes our vocabulary for looking at some of these uh, issues. In this case, bullying, intimidation. Okay, social, social issues, uh, you know, the, uh, the name calling, whatever words you came up with. And that becomes our vocabulary to deal with this. The very first time I did this activity was actually a definition of creativity. 1984, my master's course was on creativity. So I've used the definition activity to get a concept across, whether it's friendship or work, looking at the definition of home. We're working on a project in the grade six class looking at immigration and what home means. What is the definition? Because this gets the, um, you know, the, the, the basic concepts out for the kids, and we can play with the vocabulary. Uh, Doreen, a vocabulary building activity. <laughs> Pretty good. OK, but I want to make it an interactive activity. So here's the next activity very quickly. With your partner, I want you to combine definitions and come up with a new definition. Here's the trick. Your definition can only have 20 words. Go. Twitter. We're doing Twittering. OK. Who has a definition they could read out to us? Anybody finish the activity? 20 words? OK, go back there, my friend. OK, shh. Listen to this definition and see what words are in this definition that you included in yours or you might like to borrow. So we're listening for a reason. We're going to get, I'm sorry, your name? Yeah. Dan's going to give us his definition. Someone who feels bad about themselves with repeated, consistent action uh, and shares his or her pain. OK, we got his or hers. And we know that it's a noun in Dan's definition. We've got the word pain in that definition. Let's get two more. Who else has a definition? Go. One who abuses his power by using intimidation and fear repeatedly to intentionally make someone feel less than their worth. Okay, so if you didn't hear, we got the word abuse in there. We've got power and intimidation. And one more definition back there. Um, an unhappy person who's, sorry, an unhappy individual who hurts others, seeking opportunities to squash peers um, in his environment in order to assert some ill-conceived notion of dominion. Okay, dominion and ill Oh, Bob, you're... She had Bob Barton as a partner. <laughs> okay. What happened here is we have an individual response. And I don't give a length. I let the kids decide whether it's what, four words or some of you could have filled the card. And I would do that with students as well. The next part was finding those words and then collaborating with the partner. And then to continue the activity, we would go into groups of four. And that's why I would assign probably the specific word count. That invites students to edit, make careful choices, borrow from each other, 
move into synthesis, if they moved into great, uh, groups of four, perhaps, and then I would have a class definition. So the hidden agendas, individual pairs, small groups, and then whole class. What is Mr. Schwartz's class definition of bullying? And of course, the kids are very tempted to find a, a real definitions from dictionaries and the internet. I'm turning to Barbara Coloroso. Listen to this definition and see what word she chose. And she worked hard to come up with this definition. Bullying is a conscious, willful, and deliberate hostile activity intended to harm, induce fear through the threat of further aggression and create terror. It's conscious, it's willful, it's deliberate, and it's hostile, intended to harm, induce fear through the threat of further aggression and create terror. I had the privilege of interviewing Barbara Coloroso. Many of you have heard her speak. And I said, Barbara, you've traveled around the world talking about these issues. How has your definition changed? And she says, this is what I would add on. Uh, bullying is somebody who gets pleasure from somebody else's pain. And that comes from the book, picture book, Don't Laugh at Me. So again, it invites kids to uh, share their own thinking, find a thinking from others. And one statement that we introduced in the book that a bullying is, a, a person is a bully. We, it's their behaviors that are bullying. It's not that the person is a bully, it's they're demonstrating bully behaviors. And that's something for people to, the kids to think about as well, that how are these kids, is that the label that they have to get through life? Uh, so, uh, so I go through those uh, particular stages. And my fifth one is a little bit of a trick, but beginning as my, an art teacher. Oh, the dictionary said that we can't use any words in our dictionary. You can only use visual images to define bullying. And that's where the students, and I invite them to be non-figurative, uh, non-literal non -literal as well. And how would you uh, um, do some art to represent that idea? So there's some uh, building of understanding with different ways in and different group activities. Moving along to the next activity, that sheet in your um, package is called What If? I'm just going to invite you to read this silently for a moment. If you don't have it, we can get you that. Uh, this activity comes uh, directly on page eight in the um, Bully Go Round book, because uh, we wanted to pay attention, of course, to cyberbullying. Most of those on the page deal with cyberbullying. I added one or two to uh, have the kids look at those situations and what, the, what they would do uh, if they were caught in the web, certainly the, uh, the bully web. So I'd just like you to put, put your finger on one that sort of intrigued you or puzzled you. You're not sure how you would answer that? And we're not going to have a chance to talk about all of them, but with your partner or groups of three, just have a little conversation, what if, and try to answer that. I'm going to give you another 90 seconds for that. Go. I'm looking at timing, and, and I don't have any church chimes to go off like Bob did, or technology. Here's my technology. <laughs> uh, so these are interesting issues, whether you put one on the board, or let the kids choose, or put the kids in groups to talk about them. And certainly there's no easy answers. The New York Times did a whole article uh, that I was reading last Sunday about what should parents know, well, what should parents do? And what is the school's rule? What should we do as teachers about the cyberbullying? And are we at fault? Are, are we to blame? I can only raise those as questions. But I think to make the kids aware, and I think the argument is to make them caring, create a, a moral citizens, is something that we can prepare kids for if they are in these situations. Again, I just want to refer to that panel group because it's fresh in my mind. 
uh, there was five teenagers, and I, I love this term, which was new to me. He called it insulting by thumbs. We've got to get rid of insulting by thumbs. Good title for a book, Mary. <laughs> Uh, uh, or thumb insults, and I thought that was interesting. We were whole into absolutely a new dimension of anti-bullying. Of course, I want to finish off with a literacy one, so turn that page over, your what if. And this has appeared in a couple of my, our books, because it's looking at poetry, and what we've done, and we call them sentence, or poetry fragments, or snippets, and these are single lines of, uh, that come from actual poems. So I'm going to ask you to turn to a different elbow partner in a moment to, for our last chat. And so the person on the other side, just to promote interaction. I'll look over that list by yourself and which one really intrigues you. This comes from a poem. Maybe you know the poem, maybe you don't. But which line sort of intrigues you? Is that line said by a bully, a bullied person, or somebody who's a bystander, or another person? And do some sharing with your friend. Is it said by a bully, bullied bystander, and what did the line invite you to think about? I'll give you, again, 90 seconds to finish off. OK, one last talk activity then. Put on your teacher's hat, your educator's hat. What would you do with these snippets in a classroom? Share that some of ideas with a friend. What would you do with those poetry snippets? Go. The art teacher in me wants to make a graffiti board or give, have the kids use these snippets to illustrate. I love, and in the class that I did it with, they used torn paper art to create images and these snippets appeared on those images. A graffiti board, so that's the art teacher in me. The drama teacher in me, as I've explored, is having the kids say these aloud, aloud. Who said these lines? What's the story behind these lines? What if two of these characters move together? So creating a collage, a choral, um, a choral collage, uh, might emerge from the snippets where each student has a line, or move it into role playing to find out the stories behind each of these poems. I'd like to find the real poems and share them with the kids. The writing teacher in me, I want you to write a poem, folks. I want you to write a poem. I'm inviting you to write a poem, and the line that you, uh, your poem has one of these lines. What is the thought that goes before? What is the thought that goes after? You can either do a thought before or a thought after, and let's transform that into a free verse poem. I really discourage the rhyming because it's tricky, but some kids do move into rhyme. So use these lines as found poetry where the kids write their own poems to create a class, an class anthology. So some of those ideas come in The Bully Go Round by Larry Swartz. Another one that we didn't get to is you, I've had success with a grade seven class doing the uh, graphic text. We're not going to do that now, but. Um, that one where the kids uh, fill in the bubbles, whether it's a thought bubble or a speech bubble. And I actually changed this. I like leaving the last one blank so the kids can invent the last panel or continue this. So that activity is described uh, as well in the Bully Go Round, and you're welcome to use that. So to finish off then, a poem by Larry Swartz. Round and round the bully goes, where she stops, nobody knows. Round and round the bully goes by, does no one hear the trapped ones cry? Round and round the bully spins, a carousel, carousel ride where no one wins. Bully goes up, bully goes down, bully goes round and round and round. Thanks for listening.